Hey everyone, today I will show you how to make this ladder uh, game mechanic in Godot 4.3 and up. Uh, it is using a few interesting uh, techniques in that Godot allows you to uh, employ, uh, such as compo compute shaders uh, in with the compositor and uh, viewports and particle emitters. Uh, the setup is very easy, only 15 minutes or so, uh, start to finish, but it does require the use of an add-on that I made, so I will simply include a starting project uh, file with that add-on in place, so you can follow along. Uh, so let's get started. So uh, you can see this uh, fresh scene. Starting with uh, nothing set up, just a simple camera movement and uh, some post processing setup, so bloom, dark sky, etc. First, let's add a GPU particles 3D to our scene. Um, and let's add a draw pass to it. I'll use a small uh, quad, I'll use a regular quad and I'll make it smaller. Uh, I'll also add a process material, uh, which as soon as we do, we'll see these particles forming and dropping to the ground. We want to stop that with uh, gravity set to zero. I also want to increase the area of visibility. So let's go to drawing and turn the visibility AABB to have larger dimensions. like so. Um, so yeah, basically we're done for now with the particles. Let's add a sub viewport to our scene. Uh, let's call it LiDAR viewport. And let's add to it a camera 3D, call it LiDAR camera. And to that camera, let's add a small script uh, that's very simple. It uh, basically uh, matches its transform to the one of camera to follow. Every frame, let's uh, make sure to set camera to follow to our uh, main camera in the scene. We're done here. Now in our LiDAR, we can see that it generates a uh, view of the scene. Let's go to rendering, turn the debug view to unshaded. Immediately we can see that the scene now renders without uh, lighting affecting it. And we'll use uh, this toggle, enable use HDR2D so that we get a uh, raw values without tone mapping or normalization of uh, color values. And now what we want to do is also create a parallel texture that will be the position of the scene for each pixel. Uh, we can use a second uh, viewport for this, but I also want to use the compositor in this example just to show how it works. So let's go to LiDAR camera and add the compositor on it. And to that compositor, we'll add a compositor effect that I've made uh, ahead of time called position compositor effect. It will be available in the uh, project, downloadable project. We can have a look at what it does. So this is the script for it. First, I am defining this variable called the position texture stage, which is a variable type shader stage resource I have defined in the add-on. And it basically contains the compute shader for uh, this uh, post-process effect. The compute shader is here. We can actually uh, open it in an external editor to see what it does. Uh, basically, I'm getting Godot's depth texture, and I'm defining a position output texture to which I will write the position values to. I'm also defining this boiler boilerplate struct so I can get the uh, Godot's uh, like shader material green variables in the composite, in this uh, compute shader. Uh, I'm doing it specifically for the projection and uh, view matrices, which we'll um, see soon how I'm using them. And I'm defining uniform from those uh, from that struct as well. Uh, in main, I'm basically getting the render size of the uh, texture. It will match the one from the color texture that the viewport outputs. And I'm getting the pixel that this code runs for. And I'm using that these two to actually sample Godot's depth texture at that pixel. And using this operation, which you'll see in um, the documentation, I think, as well, 
uses the view and projection matrices uh, that Godot provides you uh, to actually extract a world position of the scene of that pixel. And then I just simply write uh, that world position into a parallel pixel in a position output. Uh, and all that relies on a com proper setup on the, uh, the compositor effect resource side. So render callback to again, my add on is kind of wrapping render callback. This will be called every frame. First, I'm generating the position output texture using this function. Uh, again, my add on uh, makes it really clean to see how it works. Uh, and the, this function will only be actually generating the texture once at the start of the game and every time the viewport resizes its uh, dimensions. So it's actually pretty efficient. Uh, and then for the rest of the time, it uh, uh, recycles the same texture between frames. I then wrap this texture in a texture to DRD uh, type, which Godot can then feed directly to uh, any shader materials in, our, in the engine. And I'm emitting that generate a texture with a signal called texture generated. I then get Godot's depth texture and the position texture output that we that I define uh, here. Uh, and then I also get Godot's uh, scene data, which contains all the matrices and all the uh, like time, for example, uh, that you can get in like regular shader materials under the green variables. I'm getting it here. And then I'm feeding all these to a, a dispatch of the compute shader every frame. And that's basically how it uh, works. So now we have both a color texture and a parallel a position texture that we could use in our particle emitter. Uh, let's go back to our particle emitter and simply go to the uh, process material here and modify it, uh, actually replace it with a par or an equivalent shader material using the option convert to shader material. Let's open that shader and I want to, I want to modify it first to accept our color and position textures like this. And I'm adding this filter nearest hint so that uh, when I sample like in between pixels uh, for textures, I don't get uh, interpolation of values because that would uh, cause pixels to not perfectly match with the environment and such. I also add a sampler for the sampler uniform for the position texture. Also add it uh, picked filter nearest. And now if we go to our uh, material inspector, we'll see two uh, fields here for texture inputs. Uh, we, the first one we can set to the uh, view per texture. Uh, remember to set the resource to local to scene lighter viewport, we can see that texture already here. For the position texture, because it is uh, done using a uh, composite uh, compositor effect, we need to actually uh, grab it from the signal that it emits uh, texture generated. Uh, so let's add a script on our GPU particles 3D. Let's first accept a lighter camera with an export variable, like so and uh, set it accordingly. And then of already, we can simply connect to the uh, texture generated signal that's on the compositor of light of camera like so. And then well, let's uh, actually uh, make this function that accepts the, te the position texture. It's of type texture to DRD, like so. And yeah, basically we just need to feed that texture into our uh, compo uh, process material using a set shader parameter or just set. Uh, like so, so process material that's set process, yes, the set shader must match the names of the uniform here. Ideally, just copy paste it for no ambiguity and feed in our position texture. And I also want to control when I'm emitting the or using the lighter. So I'll uh, hook uh, code that will listen to 
inputs from a mouse every frame. I'll hook that to the emitting value of the of this GPU particles emitter. Every every frame basically. Come on. Like so. Perfect. So now uh, we have like the textures fed into the particle process material correctly. We just need to actually use them in our uh, shader, in our process material. Let's find the start uh, hook function and modify where it says restart position with our own code. So first let's get a uh, random sample position. And I'm basically reusing some of the functions that I'm getting here by default. For that, and I'm going to use this uh, random sampling position to sample from the color and position textures at a random point, and then feed that uh, result to the color and position of the particle, uh, like so. And then I also remember to, I gotta remember to um, mm -hmm, position. Did I misspell? I probably did. I did, very nice. Yep, that's why I wanted to notice these. Yeah, and then I'm done here. I just gotta remember to also get rid of where it overrides the color value by default in the shader. And we're done. If I'm basically setting the article amount here to something absurd, absurd like a million articles, the ratio to 0 0.1 and the time lifetime of the particle to 10, we'll see something like this happening. Um, very, very interesting. Particles are spawning on the surface of the environment. Uh, now I want to make sure that uh, my main camera doesn't see the environment, only the particles, and the LiDAR camera only sees the environment without the particles. I can do it manipulating the visibility layers like so. Uh, get the main camera to ignore layer 1, the viewport or LiDAR camera to ignore layer 2, and GPU particles to render exclusively to layer 2. Now if I run the game, I can see something like this. And the particles are not very appealing. That's because they are uh, gray, square in shape, and only face one direction. So when we try and view them from the back, they are actually not rendering. Uh, let's fix the color thing so they match the environment color first. In our sh uh, let's go to the uh, draw pass we defined, our quad, and let's add a shader material. And let's add a shader to it, called, call it particle, like so. First, let's add a render mode, unshaded, and then also a shadows disabled. This will basically make the particle ignore any lighting effects and not cast a shadow. And then what we have to do is connect um, this setter of color, we already set the particle's color, to the albedo of the particle. Albedo is the color in 3D of elements. And it does not include the alpha, like so. If we run the game again, we'll see that the particles now inherit the color of the environment they land on, which is very nice. And the next thing to do is actually make them basically face the camera. Now this is a bit of a tricky kind of matrix operation, but I'll guide you through it. First, let's add skip uh, vertex transform, like so. Well, this basically do is, um, let me work with the particles from their just model uh, space instead of them already being placed in the world. And then I'm, I'm basically in charge of putting them in the world. So first, let's get the inverse of our camera matrix or view matrix, like so. The inverse of the camera's uh, rotation uh, specifically. Like so. And then I can combine this rotation data, basically the inverse of our camera rotation, with a, the position 
component of the model matrix, the original model matrix that we would have used otherwise for our uh, particle. We'll call it custom model. And yeah, now we can use it as if we were to use uh, the regular model matrix to put the vertex of this particle where it needs to be in the world, like so. You can see these operations like exactly in like the Godot documentation. This is nothing new. Uh, it's a bit uh, obscure, I guess, but these are bread and butter of operations like these. You can see the particles are now aligned with my camera. Always facing it, no cutting off. And all, all, of, all that's left really to do is making them appear uh, circular. And that's very easy. We just need to use their UV to our advantage. So first let's get the distance of the UV, which is kind of a coordinate on the surface of the particle from its uh, center. Let's get that distance. So and then if that distance is greater than a radius of 0 0.5, we can discard the fragment, making it not render at all. Like so, you can already see kind of it's starting to trim on this preview. But yeah, we can see something like this happening. This is very cool. Uh, yeah, that's the full mechanic. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys maybe followed even along, learned something new. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.